I'm Rob Lucuria, senior editor at Gold Derby, here with award-winning Biffa-nominated Wakana Yoshihara, makeup and hair designer on Pablo Lorraine Spencer and Kenneth Branagh's Belfast. First of all, Wakana, what a great year for you. You've got two films that everyone's talking about and you're the head makeup and hair designer on them. Oh, yes, I think, yes, like I'm on the favor of the month. So, yes, I should just enjoy this moment. <laughs> yes, but I'm, I'm still, um, yeah, I'm still nice and humble. Yes, I try yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. But you are, I think you're definitely flavor of the month. So just hold on to that for as long as you can. Um, you. you know, talking about Spencer, first of all, you're tasked with recreating iconic real life people that we are very familiar with, intrinsically familiar with. So unless they look flawless and kind of authentic, I think the film to some extent just doesn't work because we have entrenched expectations about what they're supposed to look like. So on that note, that just seems to be like a lot of pressure or was it just no pressure at all? Um, when I when I got this project and I was like, oh wow, that's that's very uncanny because I um, I used to work in a salon and and then the um, you know when, when you go through the we we had to do exams and and then I had to cut three hair it's it's one of the, one of one of it was uh, like Princess Diana's coiffed bob and then mm-hmm. I had it yeah I had to practice like possibly like eight months blow drying cutting it blow drying it and then there um to get it right and and then there so until I passed the test and then that was something I was working on probably ed- almost every day and then there so when I when I read the, when, when I was when I got this project I was like oh that's so nice that you know finally it kind of makes sense that all my trainings <laughs> really made a sense because at that time it was like a 90. I passed the test 97 and then that's the time that you know Diana died and then the, everybody wanted to look like a Jennifer Aniston so so nobody wanted to have a no, nobody wanted to have a like kind of like a bobs and then layered and so there I, I never done that to anyone so so it was a blessing for me that when I got this job and said okay now I can do what I practiced so much on wow. so, yeah that so, is so was, cool yeah, so I wasn't nervous at all. So I was like very excited, and then there, um, and then also working with working on a film that somebody existed um, or somebody exists, and it, it's actually quite easy because you just try to connect the uh, the dot from the person to to the character that you have in real life, and so um, yeah, it was it was straightforward for us. Um, but just um, just because of the actors and not that person, so you just have to make the best version of that. And and then the, if it's very distracting, and I'm sure that the audience would say something about all oh, that 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 it's getting away the way you watch the film, you feel like this very distracting. What's that wake or what's that? You know, like all all these like little details, and then you 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 cannot accept the, the character so so my job was to to make sure that you know that it's more flawless um, and then and also likable so so yeah. that's something that we worked on um, it's so interesting that you say that and first of all the fact that you've had mm-hmm. so much experience recreating her look and then you get a job to recreate her look and and it's mm-hmm. done so flawlessly like of course Kristen Stewart's performance is like unbelievable, but um, much of that has to do with the way she looks. Because without mm. that, we just don't buy in. Now, I was just wondering when you get when you get the job, and of course, there's a lot of anticipation for up Diana. Every time she comes up in a TV show or a movie, everyone's really interested. So, what was your what were your main priorities in accurately capturing her essence? Um, it was. I think there um, a lot to do with. I- I think it, I, I want to get everybody's hairstyle right because you know that's something you can control that you can't control the people's face so if their actor looks different from their um their the characters and you know that there's 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 not much you can do uh, unless you go on the prosthetic routes and then that's something that we didn't want to go because it that's that takes time and then also like labor heavy and also um, it costs a significant amount of um, the prep and also 
it's a cost. And so the, um, we, we, we said that the, the something that we have a control is hair. Um, you know, that you can, you can get the hair right, right shape and right color and to the someone that the, who exists, so existed. And so, the, um, so that's something that I, I just wanted to get, get, get those right. And then there, I think that was the quite highest aim yeah. Um, and then, but I think um, we did something. It, it wasn't period correct, and and then the, um, that that was something that Pablo said in the right in the beginning that we're not doing documentaries and we we are we are making a tale, uh, fairy tales, and so so the the we need to make the Christ. It, it's not like a, we need to make a Christian look like Princess Diana. It's more like a, you know, we are inviting Princess Diana to go to visit the Christian. So so that's the approach that Pablo had. And so that would that stayed in me quite a lot that the, you know the you, you just have to make you know you how to control the impossible to possibles and then the um yeah so it, it just kind of you, you let you have to let lots of things go but you just have to put your ground that this this detail is something that you like to work on. Um, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I noticed that you weren't going with the 1991 Diana look with the short. You're, it was you're the correct. Look, uh, yeah, and, and that was obviously very intentional. Um, and I think it also helps us understand we're not watching a, a completely historically accurate documentary. We're watching a fable about how she felt. And so yes. that was the brief, wasn't it, for you to mm -hmm. make sure that that was the key to get into her mindset. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, so and also like what happened in these three days, and it's not it's not the history documentaries, and and then the, and in these three days, and it could happen to anyone, and it could happen to me, it happened to you, and then the, I think as you said, it was very much that the how how she felt and how she um, how she broke through that moment, and then I think that's more important rather than try to get 1991 look correct. And so I think um, I was very happy that what's when Pablo said that you know we we just have to make something that the beautiful and and then the uh, suits Kristen suits um, Tim and then you know it suits their suits our actors um, rather than yeah. to be precise. Yeah, it's a it's a really risky proposition. Like it's huge risk for Pablo to go down that road. It could not have worked, perhaps, um, if people were expecting her to look a certain way. But it just does not even. It's not even a question. When you get into the film and you're so concerned about her mental state um, and how she's feeling, and that's that's a huge part of the film. On that note, I um, I often am looking, uh, even though I have an untrained eye, the makeup work on on, on characters often accentuates their mental and physical states. So part of the process I'm thinking of designing how a character might look um, might depend on whether they're feeling stressed or tired or depressed, for example. Did that ever factor in when you were trying to make her look throughout the film? Um, I think it's more like that That question is for um, Stacey Panepinto, who is uh, the Kristen's personal makeup artist for over, I think, 15 years. I think it's, they've been working together for a long time. So, um, yeah, I do um, I do observe that, you know, she changed the, the tone of the lips and the tone of the skins and, and then the... Um, so, you know, th there's lots of time that, that she she doesn't feel great and then she feels sick. And so that I think that there's a time that, you know, that she controls that with her complexion of the skins and the complexion of the, the lips. And, and then, the, and then that sometimes is under the eyes and, you know, the, the color of the eyes. And I think it, what she did was she she kept the makeup very minimum and then their skins and then their she had a very small bottle of foundations and I was thinking that Stacey do you need this because you can't get it in in Germany um you, we have to send it from UK or America and and it was so little bottles and then so how are you gonna get get that last for entire shoot and then <laughs> it did <laughs> it lasted the whole shoot Wow. Um, yeah, so that's how little that she used the foundations, and so that the and Christian and I remember that on the 
on the um, on the meeting and she said I, I really want to feel that you know when I go red and I want to show that, that I don't want anything to cover that um, my um, my feeling of that and so I think but I think it's just Stacey's very clever that she know, she knows her face so well that they're um, it's a very little application, but it's very effective and very beautiful. And it, it was a quite modern approach, but I think we made a um, beautiful version of Princess Diana. It's not hist historically correct, but I think there was a fantasized versions of that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. It is. What about mm. the other characters? They all look so meticulous. Uh, the attention to detail is certainly there characters like mm. Charles and the Queen, um, again, they have to look authentic because otherwise we, we don't really buy in as an audience, but, it, but it's also a fable. Um, so how much work went into recreating all the other looks? Um, the Charles, I think that he was the most person that I spent, I, I don't want to say about money, but, you know, I spent lots of um, my budget on the Charles because I think I wanted to create the, the hair loss of Charles um, the hair and I, which you can't see very much on the film unfortunately but um there the, we had a prosthetic pieces on his head and then the, um and then the the jack farthing had a, such long hair it's about this length yeah so so there we just have to make that inside of the, his um his short hair so so that was um it was quite a process um and also the jack has got very flat ears so the Charles had a more kind of forward the ears and so the, he really wanted to work on the details I and mean, I appreciated it so um, we made a prosthetic pieces that goes behind of his ears and it pushes it so it looks that he has a um, it's not as much as Charles but there um, we made a step forward from Jack to Charles and, and then so it was quite helpful for him and so getting the character and and then the uh, queen i think it um stella has got different structure of face and so she, her lips is much fuller um and then her eyes were much bigger and and then so we just wanted the more minimal minimalized because of the the queen has got more delicate features so so try to make the lips smaller and then eyes a bit, bit thinner um, and then, but not losing the uh, the healthy kind of glow that the um, the queen had, and then there we had to make the uh, the hair right for the for the queen. So uh, there, all those characters had all the wigs, and so the uh, we just tried to get the hair as much as right for the for queens and Charles and Camillas and so we had a lots of uh, royal families and then there um, we used the wig half of them um, and then the, how the it's it's a good that you don't notice it so that means that you know we did a good job definitely, <laughs> um, definitely. yeah I, I, yeah I didn't even really notice the work on Charles but when I looked at a picture of Jack the actor I was like mm. wow they're so different so yes. different and so nuanced so mm. that's Fantastic. Everyone's going to focus on your work on um, Kristen as Diana, but there's actually a lot of looks uh, and extensive work on this film that people may mm. not notice. So it's, it's so simple. Yes. So so it's good that we can talk about this because I think we there, it, it was not just only the Princess Diana. It was a lot of on the other character that the um, you know and and then the, I think. It's, it's a good thing. It's a great compliment that people don't notice that the makeup and hair is there. Um, and so we take it as a good take compliment. But <laughs> exactly. Um, turning our attention to your other film, Belfast, for which you've been nominated mm -hmm. um, for a British Independent Film Award. For Thank your makeup you. And hair. Yeah, congrats on that. Um, Thank you very it's much. A completely different aesthetic. Uh, we're talking about Belfast, 1969, late 60s, obviously, and black and white. Um, how much do, what additional considerations at all do you have to take when a film is being shot in black and white? Just because of the, you don't see very much of the colour and in a way it's easier um, so that the, you don't see very much skin complexions and then like lots of things like we can get away. Like, um, and also, um, it's it's easy to cheat. So the um, the 
Belfast as well. We we use lots of wigs on the Belfast because it's a period films and and then there. But if you don't notice it, it's just good things. And and then, but I, I think it, I remember um, Belfast as well. That we didn't have very much time to shoot. It was a six week shoot and it was very quick. And, and then we, we had it to get through five, maybe five weeks. And so we, we had a lot to get through. So um, there is no much time that we can just step in um, in to do the check or do the changes uh, of the characters. And so we had it to do super quick. Um, and then there, I think black and white helped in a way that, uh, you know, you see everything perfect in black and white. <laughs> and so yeah. check, checks was happy always. And so it was, we, we rarely stepped into on this, onto set. So I think that helped help them getting through the days as well. Wow. Obviously, you're recreating looks from the late 60s and you've mentioned mm -hmm. quite a lot of wigs. I personally, when I see it, I think I, I can't see any wigs. I just, just it doesn't, <laughs> they look real to me. Can you explain what the main pieces were that you worked with on Belfast? Main piece? Yeah, the like, main wigs that you worked with. Was uh, that on Katrina Katrina's. Or? Yeah, yeah. Katrina's. So Katrina's. So main character Katrina's, and then Judy has a wigs. Um, wow. So, so um, yeah, I think the the key of the success is like how to mimic the the how the hair glows, and so um, sometimes like I think it. I don't know how other people works, but I I kind of like to not touch things, but if it's perfect so so like for the Katrina's uh the hair I, I think lots of times I, I never washed the wig um I always kept it because of the more products you get on and so it, it looks more natural and so and then there are, they do lots of running arounds and and then the winds blowing up and so that when when it looks great and I just left it as is and so so you know, like it's more less is more. Don't touch them and let them be. And then so, <laughs> well, if you apply very well, and then I think once it's on, it's on. And so that they, yeah, stop fiddling. Wow. So I think so that cool. that's the that's the key. That's the key exactly. <laughs> um, I I always wonder. My final question is a more general one. Uh, whenever I speak to makeup and hair designers, I wonder mm -hmm. whether. It's, it's got to be one of the more challenging jobs because you're sometimes you're there very early in the morning um, and you kind of, I would imagine you have to be, you have to have your eye on set to make sure that everything is still in place or your, your team are making sure that everything still looks the same. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Is that a really challenging job because you're there for such long hours? Um, yes, I think it, it is challenging because you're early, but you're fast to start and then last to leave. And so... Not only us, I mean, like other departments, was costumes and AD, but we, we work long hours. And But I think that's why you have to work with people that you like. Um, so my teams, are, I've got very amazing teams, like lots of my friends, and we work together for many years. And so um, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have some people that are stuck with me and then want to work with me again. And and then there, so so I think it's just because because of that there I, I have them supporting uh, each other as a team, so, and so I think it, everything is quite um, it's it's a joy to to go to work, and then even though if it's long hours, and we try to kind of take time and look look after each other, and so it's not as hard as one person getting a hit. So there, there sometimes. I, I like to go into set, so um, I'll, most of the time I'm on set. And then, but if somebody is on set constantly, and then I go and swap with them, and so that they can go back and warm, warm them, themselves up or put the feet up, and so it's 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 important to look after each other because it's such a such a long hours, and, and then there, um, yeah, and also like I don't like to, um, morning uh, complaining about the job because you know it's it, it's it's such a it's we are so fortunate to do what we want to do and then you know get paid and get fed and then, you know it's like a fast work problem if we start complaining and so so <laughs> <laughs> um and i i have our team that they in there that the food i, I don't think it, you you have to kind of let let think, let things out sometimes but we 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 hardly complains and then so just keep their um teams very positive um, just to try to find the brighter side and then when we need to complain that we do you know we open the bottles and then we drink and then crack the jokes and then 
Yes. You know? So it's, yeah, so we do that. It's like a balance. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Mm. And of course, if everyone's happy, you keep everyone happy, mm. then you can try to get the work done. Yeah. Um, mm. On that note, Wakana, thank you mm. so much for your time today. Congratulations thank on you. two really strong films. Um, and we look forward to seeing your work in uh, going forward. Okay, lovely. So, so lovely meeting you. Thank you.